There's a companion plant for every issue that your tomatoes are going to face in the garden. Pests, diseases, even weeds. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about 15 companion plants that are gonna keep your tomatoes pest-free, disease-free, and weed-free. I'm also gonna talk about two plants that you should never, ever plant anywhere near your tomatoes. Now, these solutions are not the typical carrots love tomatoes. Um, these are scientific-based companion plants, meaning they've been researched, they've been used at universities, on farms, and they actually do work. Most of the things we've heard are nothing more than myths that have been passed down from generation to generation. Nothing against passing things down from generation to generation. A lot of these scientific methods were first passed down generation to generation, but then they were tested by science and found that some of them were real and some of them weren't. If you want more companion planting ideas, I'm gonna leave a link to my book, Companion Planting for Beginners, down below. And that's gonna give you everything you need to know about companion planting for all of your favorite vegetables. Let's first talk about stink bugs. So if you have these colored spots on your tomatoes, it's probably the work of a stink bug. One way to keep them off of your tomatoes is plant a crop that they like better, like cow peas or black-eyed peas. And you wanna plant them about five to 10 feet away from your tomato crop, and it's going to lure all those stink bugs over to the cow peas. If you have flea beetles, and if you do, you'll know because the leaves will be, it looks like someone took a hole punch to it, a miniature hole punch all over, just perfect little holes all over the leaves. Same as with the stink bugs, we want to lure them away from your tomatoes with a crop they like better. And in this case, it happens to be radishes. Flea beetles love radishes. Now, flea beetles are not as mobile as stink bugs, so you don't want to plant your radishes five to 10 feet away, you wanna plant the radishes right there in the row with the tomatoes. You can also plant pak choy in place of the radishes. Uh, it does the same thing. If you do grow radishes or pak choy, you can let them actually go to flower and that's gonna bring in some of the beneficial insects that are gonna help take care of other pests. Thrips are another problem. Now, thrips are very small and you probably won't see the bug, you might, but they are small, but you will see the damage and it's gonna look like this. That is thrip damage. Now, parsley, if you plant parsley, that's going to attract hoverflies. There's one right here. And hoverflies are great for two reasons. The adults actually are great pollinators, and the larvae are voracious predators that eat things like aphids and thrips. So if you know you have a thrip issue, plant parsley all around your tomatoes. Red spider mites, those are super difficult. Once they've taken hold, they're really difficult to eradicate, and you usually have to end up removing the plant. This is a picture of the damage they cause. If they get really bad, you will start to see very fine webbing all over the leaves, under the leaves. Uh, you won't be able to miss it. It is not a spider, it's a red spider mite. The best way to prevent this issue is to head them off at the pass. Stop them before they get started. And that is by planting alliums with your tomatoes onions, garlic, chives are a great one. You can plant a chive hedge. And the smell of the alliums will confuse the red spider mites. A lot of pests find their particular host plant that they love by smell. And so this is something that got passed down from generation to generation. Um, smelly plants like alliums, well, it was said originally they, they would ward off, they would, they would repel certain pests. But science has figured out that it's not just, it's not actually repelling them, it is confusing them. Pests fly around and they're looking to smell that tomato plant and they can't smell it. It confuses them, it doesn't repel them, they just can't find it. Now when I say tomato pest, there's probably one we all think of right off the bat. Say it with me, tomato hornworm, right? We've all seen these chubby tomato worms eating our whole plant. I mean, they, they can demolish a plant within a, a matter of a day. And there are two companion plants that can help with this. The first one is something that pairs with tomatoes in the kitchen, and it pairs even better in the garden, and that is basil. And for the same reason as the alliums are, it confuses the, the moth that lays the eggs that become the tomato hornworm, it confuses that moth. They cannot find the tomatoes because of that basil smell. 
Now I've grown basil with my tomatoes for five years and I have never had a tomato hornworm where I had my basil. And I say that because last year I had an entire row of basil in front of my tomatoes all down this bed and I didn't have any tomato hornworms here. But 50 feet that way, I had a smaller bed uh, with tomatoes in it and peppers and tomato hornworms will eat peppers as well. And I forgot to plant basil up there. And guess what? The hornworms appeared there, but not here. So basil will keep those hornworms from showing up. But what if you didn't plant basil and you've got the hornworms there? You need to attract some parasitic wasps. Now these aren't wasps that will sting you. They're very tiny. But what they will do is they will actually lay their eggs through the skin of the tomato hornworm. I know it's gross. Those babies will hatch out and eat that tomato worm from the inside out. So to attract parasitic wasps to your garden, you want to grow lots of umble flowers. This happens to be a dill flower. See how it's shaped like an umbrella and it's got tons of tiny little flowers on there. And so you can plant dill, you can plant fennel, you can plant anything in the carrot family. It produces flowers like this. That is going to attract those parasitic wasps who will take care of the hornworms for you. All right, let's move into diseases. So is there a plant that will protect your tomatoes from diseases, fungal diseases like black spot or blight? Yes, there is. Hairy vetch. Now this is a legume, so where you plant it, it's actually going to add nitrogen to the soil. But planting a cover crop of hairy vetch, it is shown in research trials to cut the incidence of fungal disease by 65%. That is huge. That is not using any type of antifungal. Now that's 65% on the leaves. It's an 88% chance of keeping the fruit from getting diseased. I mean, that's just as good as any fungicide. So grow hairy vetch. What you want to do is grow it as a cover crop and then cut it down when it starts to bloom and just let it lie there on the top of the soil. It's going to be a mulch that you're going to plant your tomato plants right through. Now how about a companion plant to deter weeds? Is there a plant that will help keep weeds from ruining your tomato patch? Yes, there are three. Number one is the hairy vetch. Just do it the same exact way you did for preventing diseases and it's actually going to help stop the growth of weeds. The second one is crimson clover and it's also a legume and you're going to plant it as a cover crop under your tomatoes cut it down right as it starts to bloom because you don't want those seeds falling and having it grow back as a perennial. It's going to become a mess really quick. But if you don't want to deal with all of that, just plant some cucumbers next to your tomatoes or under your tomatoes or around your tomatoes. Cucumbers are allelopathic, which means they produce a substance in their roots that inhibits weed seeds from even sprouting. Now they will inhibit other vegetable seeds from sprouting as well. So either have them growing already or plant your seeds first, then plant your cucumbers in after they've germinated. It won't affect the already growing plants, just the seed. The second way that cucumbers do it is they just shade the ground, just like those cover crops do. These huge leaves shade the ground so less sun gets through, thereby less weeds will grow. Now, there are two sworn enemies of tomatoes and you don't want to plant them anywhere near your tomatoes or you will have problems. The first one is a black walnut tree. Just black walnut, not English walnut. Black walnut trees produce juglone in their roots. It's a substance that is very allelopathic, especially to nightshades like tomatoes. And that is going to either inhibit the tomato's growth significantly or kill it completely. So you want to keep your tomatoes 50 feet away from the drip line of a black walnut tree. The drip line is the outer part of the canopy. The second thing you don't want to plant near your tomatoes are potatoes because they are in the same family, the nightshades, and potatoes are really even more susceptible to disease than tomatoes are. So if potatoes get it, they'll very easily pass it on to any neighboring tomatoes, which if the potatoes weren't there at the beginning, the tomatoes may not have gotten it. So make sure that your tomatoes and potatoes are at least 10 feet apart, but the further the better. I hope this list of 15 companion plants for tomatoes helps you get a bumper crop this year without pests, diseases, or weeds.